Oh, shit. Fuck you! <laughs> I fucking hate those maracas. <laughs> okay. Does that count as a preamble? Hey! You, you hey! Can, you can do your Stop best. Stop reading! <laughs> Chemicals by the shoes! I'll give it a oh, solid fuck. 8 out of 10! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, spoilers! Ten out of ten. <laughs> I will. Uh, it's spoiled. The shoes are a French electro rock duo formed in two thousand seven. It consists of Guillaume Brière and Benjamin Lebon. <laughs> That might not be it, but when I can't pronounce something in French, I will oh, because it usually works. I like that you chose as well to announce the French names in the most radio, like BBC British voice you could possibly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. conjure up. Who are both songwriters and producers. Now, every one of these tracks on this album yes. features singers. Yes. Who are pretty well unknown, uh, to me anyway. Did you recognise any of the, the, uh, the featuring... Everyone. Pretty much everyone the, who featured on the album I didn't didn't recognise. Did you recognise them? No, as in, like, does every track have a feature? Every track has a feature, apart from the last track. But every single track does. Okay. And and they're all fantastic. I couldn't fault any one of the uh, featuring I vocalists. I didn't fault any of the singing. Yeah. That's all this awesome. album confused the hell out of me. <laughs> you just press play like a lot. at the top. <laughs> like a lot. Yeah? Yeah. Because it was too many genres hitting you at once? Yeah. Right in the face, just... Yeah. Right in the face, just... Right in the face. Yeah. Just right in the face. So the first three songs, I can all be... I, like, they sound incredible. Like, I love the first three songs. Mm. Yeah. Like, to the point where I was on the verge of wanting to <laughs> listen to everything this band's ever done. But... Then the fourth song comes along, Lost in London, and I was like, this is what? different. I really like Lost in London. I'm not saying I didn't like it. No, you just said it in front of everybody that you didn't <laughs> like Lost in London, which is one of my favourite tracks I on the said whole album. It got to that song, and I was like, this is changing. It's different. It's uh, it's more minimal than everything else, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, female vocals this time. Yes, by Petite Noir. Interesting. Yeah. I doubt it's her real name. Wait, what's her name? Petite Noir. Little Black. Or not like that. No, it's... it's. I wouldn't, like, make up the other... It's yeah, but Petite is it... Noir. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, so uh, then Vortex of Love comes along, and that is, like, completely different. To the point where, if you were to tell me that that... Or if you were to play me that and then play me any other song from the previous four... I would never have been able to tell you that it's the same people we're listening to. You see, I got a different feeling from that. I felt like they covered a lot of genres in this album. Mm. But I thought the amazing thing was is that it seemed very cohesive. I thought they I they very much thought. sat from their mm. sort of style and sound of music for most tracks. And then were like, this is what we sound like, which I think is like the first couple of songs. Because they're sort of more genreless, more sort of ro- just dance rock stuff. And then for a lot of the other ones, they're like, this is what we sound like. We're now going to do, like, a, like Vortex Love was basically like a slow DMB track. Yeah. Like, we're yeah. going to do this style from that. Drifted was, like, sort of techno. It was very much yeah, sort yeah. of, like, progressive techno sort well. of stuff. That was awesome. Which one, sorry? Uh, Drifted. Drifted. The third song. That, we're going to do that. And then they're like, this is, like, Big Room House. This is, like, sort of <clears throat> poppy deep didn't, house. didn't and feel the Big Room House track that much. That, right... Which one was that? You and uh, you, us and us. I. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I honestly thought, deep house question mark. Is that song? <laughs> no. Is that song room. a fucking joke? <laughs> it's awful. Same. Thing. Like it, you know what? It's actually enjoyable apart from when it gets to that like big room kind of break. But this is the thing. I was looking through that and I was getting interested because drifted was awesome, mm. like a progressive techno track. I was like, that's brilliant. Then vortex is kind of this interesting sort of slow DMV mm. ballad. And I was like, that's pretty nice. And then we have some of them. Then us and I comes and the first thing I thought is like, oh, you and I. It's kind of generic name, but they've changed it to us. <laughs> yeah, like a hundred people have done that. And then it sort of started. And I was just like, what? It was so weak and like badly produced and then all of a sudden I have no the kick, the kick was like awful hugely synthetic mm. and really well, it was small very synth heavy. you had to turn the fucking top of it up and then the percussive lead was 
disgusting sounding. It was so I it was didn't, terrible. I, I thought that the production on it was... It had some ideas in it. I was like... In that song this, that you talked about on the some, album. Oh, no, this song in particular. I was like, it has some good ideas in it. I'm yeah. not liking the sound. And then the final third came in, and it was like big volume cuts. And I was like, again, interesting ideas. But it's like... This is just... I feel like... It, it doesn't correlate with anything that's happened prior to this. They tried to make Big Room House interesting. Like, they've tried to do interesting things with all these other dance genres. I, I thought that was interesting. But they just did it badly. I didn't think it was bad. I thought they <laughs> did... That it was interesting. It was I found so it was interesting. generic. But... It just followed Big Room House formula to the T. Mm. It was so generic, and it was just, like... I, I think it had more going than just Big Room House. going way to... I think that track was, like, a one. The yeah. track what? was god awful. It was so so bad. I feel. What I do feel you like think that, about that song? That song, I'll probably give it a four. You know what? That because that break really fucking brings the whole thing down. The when break? It, what? Like, yeah. I think it means the last. You third. mean the drop? Don't you? Drop. Drop break. break. The guy, the guy the he bit, works for calls it breaks. When? When? Yeah, I disinfected. <laughs> the, 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 the big room house bit with the big synthetic kick and the awful percussive like, lead <laughs> thing going on. I can't remember. It. <laughs> it's a big room, I, man. I, I remember dividing room. that song into thirds, and the first two thirds were pretty much the same, and the final third was very new and different. Mm. If you're talking about that final third, I like that. But, no, I'm talking about the whole song. But again, I didn't like the song. Yeah, yeah. And then Give It Away, I thought was awful. I thought that was a bad song. I thought that I was thought a that really was, bad song. I, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Really enjoyed that one. Okay. It was there go at a pretty just pop deep house yeah it was deep house it was there it was their dance cock rock as we call it and it was catchy but it they managed to do it in a not generic way as well it wasn't when I heard it I didn't go oh it's the pop deep house song yeah this is pop deep house fuck it next song I listened to it and I was like oh this is pretty nice oh yeah I I hear that I think the opposite of you I think that that was way more generic than us and I and I think that the only thing that was interesting about give it away was the fact that underneath it you could hear these guys have really good ideas of how they want to produce music, mm. but they're not doing it. Like, in this song, you were like, there are little bits which are like, this is amazing. Why aren't you doing more of that? Because you've just, you've got this really generic thing over the top, like this singing of vocals over the top of that was just boring. Nothing I fucking love the vocals in that. Especially oh, that little right. vocal, like, hook they have. And they kept repeating over and over again. <coughs> oh, yeah, that's selling it to me. It's like a that mantra. Hook that they had, and then they like repeated it over yeah, and over and over. Repetition is important, especially in dance music. Just boring. Next. This guy. This one was great. Great song. Uh, next 10. one. 15 instead of. And, uh, that instead was, that and was an brown. interesting one. It was weird. Cause it's a weird name. I can't even say it. 15, 15 instead, instead and, brown. and brown. It was It was so strange. It was like. It was one of those things like the sort of. Miley Cyrus thing we're talking about where it's sort of just being strangely upfront as a weed reference. I had like the 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 streets kind of style yeah, of lyrics. Very much that sort of like sort of talking very English accent sort of thing. Yeah. And it was like I, f- I liked that it was different, but I didn't think it was done interestingly enough for me to be like I really like it. Like I I didn't dislike it, but I, I, I like, really liked halfway through just odd. Uh where it kind of yeah, it, yeah. It went yeah, into yeah. like drums and electronic. That guy kind of stuff. fucks that off was, whoever's doing the good. feature yeah, on yeah, yeah. it. I didn't like the feature now one actually too much. I, yeah, I, I didn't like the vocals. I, I loved the instrumental on that. I it thought that the, it started to drag towards the end of both bits though. I yeah. thought he was talking for too long, and then that instrumental bit went on a bit too long. Mm. Mm. Um, you know what was really interesting about this album as a whole? Mm. How British is this album for for a French for a French British. album? Yeah, yeah. Like, all the vocalists <laughs> sound really British, and then at the yeah. end they have like this, a lot of grime stuff kind of going on. Feed the Ghosts. I just want to talk about the guy on that. Yes. Is he like the English Tyler the Creator? Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> He's like a really kind of deep kind of voice. Yeah, he does voice. the Tyler the Creator, like slow, really deep, like, I'm a fucking walking paradox. You know, yeah. like really <laughs> low <laughs> shit. And I was just listening to it and I was like, it's kind of cool. It's, it is like sick, a sort of English Tyler But again, Creator. really crazy because that's like a decent dark hip hop track with mm. like some kind of... Electronic I, backing. I, I feel like that one very much is, is trying what to be them that? doing What's a title that got to do with Deep House or like just some kind of a bit yeah, that's what generic we're saying. pop I, I think they, and then also some really cool like fucking space indie pop I think on this stuff. album you can pick out like so- these songs <laughs> and probably pick out where the information was from. 15 instead and Brown I think could be obviously like a Streets inf- influence something like that. The Feed the Ghost is obviously Tyler Crater influence. Uh, give it away could be like disclosure. 
uh, you and I could be Martin Garrix, could be something like that. Could even be modern knife party that they're like influencing like yeah. the bad parts of it. Uh, Vortex of Love could be like just uh, rudimental, something like that. I got, I got sort I of the DMB yeah, ballady yeah. sort of stuff. Drifted could be someone like uh, Atlas or uh, Echo or one of the sort of the the new mousetrap guys. Mm. Like, there's very obvious things where you're like, they were like, we want to do our version of this style. And I think that was what this whole album was. It was a collection of them going, we're going to do this thing. I didn't like that. Way. I didn't like that as an idea for the album. I don't think it's a great idea for an album. It feels, it makes it feel more like a collection of tracks it than an album. It did feel like a compilation album. It was weird. But I thought it was a collection of but generally good songs. I didn't think, well, I thought that there were two bad songs. As I said, Vortex of Love, Give It Away, didn't like either of them. But the rest were good songs. Mm. The first three, and the final song, "Whistle." I quite like that one. I'm, I'm. A Whistle. I was. Meh. I can, I can, I could go either way on most of those ones you said. But that was us like, and I. I just it was can't like an ambient house track. That. that last one, I loved it. Yeah, "Whistle." Whistle was alright. I wasn't a massive fan of "Whistle." I think the worst songs on this track. I think us and I was awful, and then I think "Whistle" and "Vortex of Love" were sort of in the lower range of these tracks. But I still mm. thought they were decent. But. I want this is what I want them to do mm. and this is like obviously they're not going to do this because no one is ever going to do this because mm. it's stupid um, <laughs> but shoes, this is what you this. should do right <laughs> you should grab your first three songs from this album mm. and you should continue making songs like that <laughs> because that is genuinely like I would give that an eight maybe a nine like those three songs they were all really interesting it had your style the vocals were incredible the production was incredible it was interesting at every point throughout that song and Made For You was like a five minute song and it just felt like a three minute indie pop those, rock those three track songs it, were they were good. so good mm. I love them and then you tried to like do your own version mm-hmm. of different types of other songs and it just mm. felt as though the first three songs are really good the fourth one not as good in my opinion as the first three but it kind of like followed on but then track five onwards was just like, we're going to do this type of song mm. and then this type of song, this type of song. And there is no way that you could have played me any of these songs and me be like, that is the same person. The same people that did Vortex of Love, I would never say did Feed the Ghost. So I'll take it that your favourite songs from this are just going to be three. the first three. And Whistle. And whistle. I, li- I enjoyed Whistle. My Although Whistle had nothing to do with the first three, again, it's style. <laughs> like, I, I You'd like him to do an, a Whistle album as well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. My favourite ones would be Submarine, Lost in London, um, Feed the Ghost, I'd go for. Mine would probably be Drifted, Submarine, and Feed the Ghost. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So, marks out of ten... Gareth. <laughs> I would give this a seven. Ooh. Because I think ooh, ooh. I agree the the best bits of this this album, I, I would say are all eights. Some of the, the all the first three, uh Feed the Ghost, a couple of other ones. They're all really good. But there were low moments. There's like Vortex and uh Fifteen Instead of Brown, which I think are more just average songs, and then there's Us and I, which I honestly think is like one out of ten. But apart from that, it's pretty good. Kit. <laughs> oh, okay. What would you give it? You know what? I really, really want to give this album an eight, but mm. I'm just not sure if I can. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Totally. But I want to give it an eight. <laughs> so you know what? I'm usually quite a harsh marker, so just for mm. shits and gigs, light eight. Okay. Light eight on this one. I wanted, to, like, when I first listened to this, I was like, this could be a nine from a band that I've literally mm. never heard of. And then it changed. And the, and then the Fire Nation attacked. I don't know. It's <laughs> difficult to rate. It really is. Because those first four tracks could have been, if that was continued, that could have been Nate or Nine as an album. Mm. But the other ones, I just, I don't think the other songs are bad, but I feel as though they don't work as an album. So rating it as an album... It's going to have to be between a 6 and a 7, and I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a 7 just because I love the first three songs. 
Okay. A light seven. Week seven. Well, I honestly thought we'd already ended the episode. I think You're lucky we were... I didn't start playing music. <laughs> 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 thought we were just chatting for that last bit. No. <laughs> I feel like we've uh, we've dealt with this album in a, in a fair and concise manner, to which, of course, you've all become accustomed to because we are professionals. So, if you'd like to... If you like to press that thumbs up button, if you enjoyed the video, and if you want to go and go away and listen to this band, because not a lot of people have heard of them, so go away and listen to this, and uh, come back, leave a comment. What do you think of it? And then you know, fucking subscribe, like any human being would. Come on, I got kids to feed. Catch you later. <laughs>